Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello to everyone in the room and also on the web. I know I know a lot of people in the room, but also know that there are a lot of people online watching and, and listening today. So, welcome. Uh, I am Martha Mann. I'm a nurse. I work at U Ner University of Texas Southwestern in Dallas, but I am the NMO repository study nurse. If you are on the website and you click the link that says email information about the repository or call the 800 number, it comes directly to me. So um, that's how I've made the connection with a lot of you. Uh, and today I want to talk about the state of the NMO repository this year. And I'm, it might as well be called ECHO today because a lot of it is stuff you've just heard from Ms. Jackson. But um, I want to, I mean, here's what I observed. It was a great year. I got a lot of calls and emails. I made a lot of trips and got a lot of samples. And speaking of samples, I do want to say we're set up across the hall. We'll be there all day today and tomorrow. A lot of people have already come to visit us, so thank you very much. And if you've got an appointment, we'll see you soon. And if you don't have an appointment but you're interested, come see us anyway. We'll talk to you about that and try to get you in. We'll be here, like I say, all day today and tomorrow. So um, with that, I wanted to, uh, before we get into the specifics of what happened this year, I want to talk about, uh, some of you saw this last year, but I think there are a lot of new people also. Why a repository? Why do we care? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? And I just want to go back a little bit the, um, uh, and talk about the Accelerated Cure Project and how it's related to the NMO repository. So the Accelerated Cure Project was founded in 2001 with the mission of, of creating a resource that looks into um, treatment uh, causes and mechanisms and ultimately cures of demyelinating diseases like uh, transverse myelitis, MS, NMO, and things like that. They launched the Biobank in 2006 to help promote research by providing blood and data samples for research into those diseases. And along the way, they developed really significant dynamic partnerships with the Guthie Jackson Charitable Foundation and the Transverse Myelitis Association. And it just gives a strength of numbers of attacking this from a lot of different directions. You know, it's, it's you know, when you look at the other things, it helps narrow the focus about what each disease is on its own. It leads to uh, <clears throat> learning and information for all the diseases. Um, and I know a lot of you know this, a lot of you have been through it, but what happens when you say, I want to participate in the repository? Uh, the first step, a lot of stuff has happened before this happens, but eventually you will get to the day that you donate blood and give us a data, and the data is in the form of a very comprehensive questionnaire that is very important to the research. It's an important part of your donation because it gives the researchers additional information about family genetics, lifestyle factors, environmental factors, and things like that that can really help inform them further than just the blood. Um, the blood and the data are all de-identified. There's a double barcode system. It protects your identity. It helps uh, create uh, more integrity for the research. Um, the blood is sent to one lab in Maryland that maintains it and processes it and distributes it in a very uniform fashion, which is important. Uh, and also just to let you know, just that little bit of blood that we take can fuel a hundred studies and it can last indefinitely. So that little bit of time and effort on your part makes a giant difference in the world of research for this rare disease. Um, the sample requests come in, but they're, we don't just send them out. We, uh, there's an advisory board that, that evaluates every project for that it's ethically, ethically conducted and it's a sound study. So when someone does receive samples, their agreement with the repository is when they finish their work, they return the findings back to Accelerated Cure Project so that they are made available to other researchers. They can build on the work that's gone before, so every study is more dynamic, and we hope to accelerate the cure in that way. And this uh, model of sharing data is unique to this repository. As far as we know, no one else is doing this. And to me, I, I like that. I like to work with somebody that's that forward-thinking and uh, collaborative when, uh, when you're dealing with something so rare. Um, and so they've developed uh, 10 enrollment sites throughout the U.S. at places like UT Southwestern where I work, Johns Hopkins, Stanford. Here's the map of all of them. In addition, for people, although the repository also collects blood samples from people with other diagnosis, if you have NMO and you don't live near one of these places, call me or email me and we'll work out a way for uh, you to make a donation. Either I'll come to you or we're working on some other uh, opportunities, but we'll find a way to get you in the repository if you're interested in participating. Um, progress to date. Oh, let's see, I went backwards. It's got the biggest button in the world and I still can't do it. Um, 
a progress to date, you can see uh, since 2006, this is the total number of participants of all, and this includes, as you see, other diseases and controls and longitudinal visits that I want to talk about in a minute, but you'll see 193 NMO uh, subjects have participated to date. So we have more samples, but that's how many individual people have participated in the, in the repository. Um, this also is a little bit of a review, but, but how are your samples being used? I ask that all the time. Um, to date, Accelerated Cure Project has sent out samples to about 53 projects, and 10 of them have been NMO specific and have gone out to places like this that I've listed. I think we've already talked about those, so I'm going to keep going. And additionally, like Ms. Jackson was talking about, there's been a, a work with 23andMe on a genomics project, uh, and, and work with other groups who are um, interested in find bio, finding biomarkers that help distinguish between the different diseases, and that helps establish better ways, faster ways to diagnose uh, between diseases that are often similar, have similar characteristics, but are very different in, in how they need to be treated. And, and that's, again, I keep saying that, but that is one of the uh, strengths of this type of a partnership that includes other groups that are working with other diseases. It just, um, it, it gives more strength in attacking things from different way and expanding the learning. Um, and I want to go back to this for a minute. So um, I wanted to look at two numbers. So there are 193 people have been participants in the repository and 1,700 people with MS over this time. So when you think that NMO is about a 100th as rare as MS or there are about one NMO case for every 100 MS cases, in the repository we have more than one NMO sample for every 10 MS cases. So I, I think that's significant. I think that that goes to show, I mean, to me it's part of the power of the partnership. You can see, there, here's my little graph I like, I like graphs, um, that it's gone from 49 samples when the partnership began up to, like as of last week, there were 193 individuals who have participated in the repository. Uh, and that, you know, that's the impact of the partnership, the combination of the effort and the focus um, really has caused this disproportionate uh, representation of NMO in the, in the repository as, you know, as opposed to how it is actually out in the world. And another thing I just want to say, um, a way that uh, we get other, other people in the repository too is from the Transverse Myelitis Association. They're a great partner in this. And one thing, for example, just last week I had a real uptick in calls and emails and everybody was saying, oh, I got the brochure in my newsletter from the TMA last week, and I want to know about the repository. I want to see what I can do. And, and that's so thank you so much for Sandy Siegel. And I don't know if you guys know him, but I told him I was going to point him out. He's standing right there, uh, Transworth Myelitis Association. He is such a supporter of our efforts. And I thank you very much. Uh, let's see. And then, like we're talking about, we are making some significant differences across the hall today and tomorrow uh, with the blood draws that we're doing at the patient days. Um, so the future of the repository, is, as I think about it, is growing, there's no doubt, you saw the graph, but it's also maturing. We're talking about doing stuff besides just getting people in the repository. We're looking at, um, you know, what does it mean to mature and, and to get even more valuable than we already are. Um, one of the growth factors that we've discovered is really important is group draws, like coming to patient day every year, and uh, the rare neuro oh, I can't say it, neuroimmunologic diseases symposium that was held in Dallas last year. It was co-hosted by UT Southwestern and the Transverse Myelitis Association. You know, even though we just got five NMO-related enrollments, there were only 12, so NMO had 40 percent of the enrollments at that event. Um, we found that's important. You can see what we're going to do, we're, we're hoping to do today, people that have already scheduled. We've already had some walk-ins. Uh, you know, this is going to be a significant uh, couple of days for the repository here at this event. Um, and I was talking about longitudinal draws, and that's one of the big maturity factors, I think, that, uh, you know, in addition to just getting numbers in the repository, there's a real interest in research to have multiple samples from people, the same people over time. And that's one thing, especially patient day, in places that we're going to see people repeatedly every year or so. You can see every year we're just increasing the number of longitudinal draws that we get. And I want to thank everybody that's putting their arm out more than once for us 
it really is making a difference. And look at what we're doing this year. It, it looks like it's gonna be more than half of the blood samples we get this year or, or a, a multiple sample from someone we've already collected at least once before. There's some three Peters in here, you know who you are. Um, so what else can we do? Some of the things we're talking about to expand this uh, maturity process is, you know, figuring out quicker response times, you know, getting me to you faster, uh, and, and part of that is figuring out uh, easier ways to get to you rather than the cumbersome process of, you know, getting the approval to go into a doctor's office or like that. Uh, we're working on some ideas there. Maximizing these group events, like this year, we are doing the blood draw over three days rather than just one, and so it allows us to get the kind of numbers that we're going to get today. We're really interested in getting to people sooner after first attacks or after you know, during an exacerbation or something like that, um, you know, if we can get to somebody quick enough to get some blood before treatment without delaying treatment, very important. I don't want anyone to say, no, don't do that till, you know, they come and take my blood. Um, but that's important. That's important for research. We want to just create a repository that's full of samples of every type of opportunity and situation you know, before and after and during treatment, things like that. And, and we want your ideas too. You've been through it too. I mean, I've, I see my side of it. You've got your side of it. Anything you can tell me that you think might be an improvement to the process or how we do the repository, um, let us know if you're having an exacerbation or like that. Maybe we can get a sample. Those are important samples to have too. And just raise awareness. I know there's going to be a lot of talk about the advocacy program and some things like that, but just the more we can get the word out and the more people know to think about NMO is going to make such a difference. Um, so there are a lot of resources that can help us all. They help you, but they also help the repository. And, uh, you know, Spectrum is wonderful. It, cr it creates a community for people. It, you know, I talk to people all the time that I feel like I'm the only one. There's nobody in my state or county or whatever. But it's always there online. And one thing, you know, in addition to participating, you learn, but you also teach others just from your sharing of your own experience. But you can spread the word about the repository in your experience and support people in thinking about participating. And you know, everyone gets to make that decision for themselves, but I mean, most people I talk to are, are really uh, interested in participating. But just you know, support people, spread the word, and if you've had a good experience, let them know. And the doc on the map, it's great. We want to fill it up. This is actually an old version. There are a lot more docs on that one, but I couldn't. I'm not very good at PowerPoint. Um, but all those docs are people I can call up and say, hey, you know how you're on the map? There's somebody I want to meet at your office. And it just helps me, like I've been trying to do, is get there faster and just have an easier access to have a place to meet people, to enroll them in the repository. Um, and the other resources that help are, I'm going to call them up on stage right now. It's everybody that works for the um, Accelerated Cure Project, the 10 enrollment sites, every one of them has a study coordinator who, you know, I am very focused on NMO, but I talk to them all the time and remind them about NMO. And today, I just, wanted, I just want you to see the faces. We have three of the site coordinators. We have Gita Barea from Johns Hopkins, Stephanie Huberman from UT Southwestern. Uh, is he there? Is Daniel there? Daniel, <laughs> Daniel LaBus from Stanford. Um, this is Morgan McCrary. He has just come to UT Southwestern to help me with the enrollment process. I know a lot of you have talked to him. Imagine seven more faces up here, and imagine seven more people who every day work on this repository and, and try to increase it and try to further what we're doing with it. Also, I want to point out our coaches, referees, and cheerleaders on the end. That's Holly Schmidt and uh, Sarah Lau from uh, Accelerated Cure Project. They're the moderators, and they keep us going and keep us straight. And when I say, oh, I'm going to have to get a ruling on your question, I usually am talking to Sarah, and she tells me whether what I'm going to do in that situation. Um, and then, of course, the transfer my I made Sandy stand up. I'm not going to make him stand up again. But, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I think about you all every day, and that's, that's what keeps me going. And, I mean, that's what we're all here for, but I really do feel like what we're doing is making a really a big difference. And I just want, I know you guys probably have emailed or talked to these people, and I just wanted you to see them in person. Um, Oh, you know, the other thing I was going to tell you about growth, you know, the first patient day we came to do a blood draw it was me, one other person, and, and Johnny O that you met, the phlebotomist who's been here all three years. Uh, this is what it takes now to do the blood draw at patient day. Every year I have to call somebody, can you come help me? 
and there's even more that that uh, they're probably somewhere else right now. But but then the other thing is is you. I mean, you help us because you can give us the feedback that we need to make it uh, make it what works for you. I mean, you're a really important part of the partnership. I mean, you're why we're doing this, but you're an important part of guiding us as well. So if you can think of anything, like I say, that uh, from your side makes it easier, better, uh, tips, I don't care, just call me and let me know, because I, I, I love to hear from you, and, uh, and I really uh, want to know what it's like from your side. So um, thank you very much. Uh, thanks so much also to Victoria Jackson and Bill Guthy for hosting this amazing event every year. It's the highlight of my year, I think. I really enjoy it. And uh, that's it. I'm looking forward to an amazing year. Um, come see us over there. Call me. I'll come see you. And thank you very much.